Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And, you know, as I tape these uh, videos, they're all single takes. And they, they come from things that I've thought about over the last several weeks and things that are pertinent to my own life and the life of my patients. And it's interesting. As I sit here right now, I am absolutely exhausted. And it's early morning. I thought I had a good night's sleep last night, but it was a restless night's sleep, and I was up a lot, and I just didn't have a good REM night's sleep. And that's happened over the last several <clears throat> nights, and it's kind of built up. And this discussion, I want to talk about the importance of sleep and reverting back to carbohydrates. I did something this morning that I haven't done. Oh my God, I can't remember when last I did this. Uh, I ate breakfast. Now, it was eggs and cheese. It was fried eggs and cheese uh, with obviously my traditional pot of coffee. But the question is, why? why? Why did I do that? And it's because I am utterly exhausted. And when you're exhausted, all of the security measures, all of the standard platforms of your life, the way that you protect yourself from dysfunction, all of that goes to hell in a handbasket. And when you're exhausted, it's almost like drowning and you don't make smart decisions. You are, at least certainly in my life, I am quick to react negatively and quick to be reactive instead of stepping back from issues and allowing my emotions to go away and then connecting with the issues and either responding or processing them. That goes out the door and you become uh, an emotional hair trigger um, you react to things like tiny little things with just a degree of irritability, and you tend to revert back to old forms of emotional management, very dysfunctional forms. Thank God, and this is so key to addiction management, we do not have any carbohydrates in the house. <laughs> but you know what, folks? When I was looking around to see what I could have for breakfast this morning, I saw unsweet baker's chocolate in the freezer. Now, unsweet baker's chocolate, if you've ever tasted it, tastes like candle wax. And yet, at least on two occasions in the last 22 years, I've eaten it. Why? Because it had the word chocolate on, on there and because I was under huge emotional distress. And it's not just the distress that you're under. It's not using in a muscle memory the standard ways in which you manage that. So yes, I took my dog for a walk this morning. I had my cup of coffee. Those were routines for me. But my God, this, this middle of the morning, I'm exhausted. And I know I've been burning the candle at both ends. I've been working ridiculous hours. I've been juggling a whole bunch of different things. And, and I know it's not about me, It's but it's a personal story that every one of you can tell from time to time. And I think the purpose of me sharing this with you is the critical importance of adequate sleep. So, so how does sleep work? Well, sleep is where your whole body, not just your mind, but your whole body ideally enters a state of rest. Your conscious brain shuts down. Your subconscious brain is still churning, and I'll come back to that in a little bit. But from a hormonal perspective, progressively as you get deeper into sleep, everything should shut down. And you give the hormonal factories in your body a rest. So when it comes to the hormonal milieu of sleep, early in the morning when we wake up, you release a lot of cortisol. That's called the dawn effect. Cortisol gets the liver to release a bunch of sugar into your bloodstream. Diabetics will see their blood sugar go up. In fact, everybody sees their blood sugar go up. You're ready for your day. And you should get that surge of sugar that is cortisol mediated. And that's why breakfast is the least important meal of the day. But then slowly over time in a healthy environment, cortisol levels start to go down. And your early rush of glucagon also starts to come down a little bit as you release some sugar into your bloodstream. Your insulin and glucagon very sensitively should balance those two out. And your cortisol levels go down. Now, to manage emotional distress 
and every human being can focus for around 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at any one time. And then they have to have to have to have a little break. I call it a mind cleansing moment or an MCM. And for those of you that have watched my videos on a regular basis, you know that a snack is always an emotional event, but this is my coffee. My coffee is my bridge. It is my little mind cleansing moment, but hormonally what it's doing is that dopamine surge that I use to stay awake, to stay uh, focused, needs a break when it builds up too intensely in my brain cells. And when I take that little mind cleansing moment, that little sip of coffee, I get a serotonin rush. And that brief period of serotonin from my brain cells gives me that bit of relaxation so that now I can refocus on the next part of my day. So you're getting this back and forth seesawing of dopamine building up while you focus, serotonin break, and every human being has a tell. Every human being has a dominant thing that they do for that emotional little mind cleansing moment. And you can talk to someone within five minutes, know what that thing is, because the reveal is always there, because looking for the opportunity to have that moment is always uppermost of every human being's head. So, we live our lives, we, we function through the day, dopamine, serotonin, dopamine, serotonin, and toward the evening, typically after dinner, now, hopefully, that serotonin that is being released in a longer period of time as you unwind, and that's why with carbohydrate addiction, most people are most vulnerable to screwing up, to snacking, to eating sugar and starch in that time period between bedtime, uh, sorry, between dinner and bedtime. Because that is where we slowly relax, getting ready for a healthy night's sleep. And we have a longer period of serotonin release. And on the back end of serotonin, hormonally, you can look this up from a biochemical perspective, but serotonin gets converted to something all of you have heard of. And that is melatonin. So serotonin gets broken down to melatonin. And melatonin, serotonin is your relaxation hormone. Melatonin is your sleep hormone. And if you have healthy serotonin release after a meal, go for a walk, play a game of cards, uh, do something that relaxes your brain, both consciously as well as allows you to th sort through some of the hoarding that you've done through the day of emotional triggers, of issues that triggered emotions, and you've shoved them in your subconscious, if you're able to connect with those and process them through the day, but, but ideally complete that processing in the early evening as you get ready for bed, then there's emotional restitution that's what serotonin does, is it allows you to connect with those issues and process them. And that's why time components in an effort-based emotion management system is so important, rather than a drug that gives you this instant spike. So if you, for example, have dessert right after dinner, you get the sudden rush of endorphin release, the sudden rush of relaxation, but it's a short-lived spike with a reward up front. It's a chemical high. And on the back end, you don't process the issues that cause the need for that high. You take them and you shove them in your subconscious. I'll deal with you later. I call that psychological hoarding. That's part of a dis the dysfunction of addiction management. But you shove those into your subconscious and you, you hoard them there. And then maybe you dumb down in front of the TV and you numb out. You're not processing in front of the TV. You're just escaping. So you're not dealing with your shit during the evening. And it, you take all of that to bed with you. So now you've got the serotonin that's trying to give you relief and you're not allowing it to give, it, give you relief because you are not relaxing. You're not going for that walk. You're not listening to that music. You are not chilling out and doing an endorphin activating effort-based thing. You're using a drug that obliterates your emotional tension, but disconnects you from dealing with stuff. And you hoard that. So melatonin doesn't get a chance to build up. Ideally, you do something that releases serotonin, those, ser those high levels of serotonin get broken down to melatonin. And as your melatonin levels rise, you get sleepy, 
You get into bed, you fall asleep, and you slowly deepen that sleep under the influence of melatonin to the point of REM sleep, where you're having this massively restful sleep, irrespective of how long. The length of sleep is important, but it's less important than the quality of sleep. But if you still got that uh, 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 serotonin need, if you still got that endorphin rush and you haven't created the melatonin, you may fall asleep because you're exhausted, but things fester, you're tossing and turning, and you're not sure about what's going, ha- going on. And as soon as your conscious brain relaxes and you get a tiny fraction of the sleep that you need, now out of your subconscious is bubbling up all the shit that you haven't dealt with. And you're waking up in the middle of the night, almost in a, para- in a, in a panic, whether it's a, a nightmare or whether it's just this, oh my God, I got to de-, And it festers and it just destroys you because you haven't dealt with it during the daytime. And effective emotion management is giving yourself time throughout the day and finally in the early evening to deal with the stuff, to put things to rest, to find times that relax your conscious brain while you're awake, that has a time component so you can connect with your subconscious. You know that you're reading a book, And the world dissolves around you as you get into the book. But then in that relaxed state, your brain leaves those pages and you enter that little twilight zone. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're seeking. That twilight zone, that meditative space where you can come to terms with and process some of the issues that you haven't dealt with during the day. But if you don't do those things, if you're using some drug like sugar or starch or nicotine or alcohol or the television to numb you out, to give you that instant gratification, that instant tranquility, but no time component, no relaxation, you're not effectively processing issues. You're just obliterating your feelings. And then you go to bed and you may fall asleep because you're exhausted, but you have an awful night's sleep. And that's my problem today, this morning. I had a really rough few days A lot of stuff going on, good things and bad things, but a lot of issues. And I stopped making the time for me. If you look at life, your life, everybody's every day is divided into two segments. The things we have to do as part of the obligations of our day. And on the other side are the things we get to do for relaxation. Yes, A healthy get-to-do relaxation lifestyle requires effort. But the effort produces that twilight zone and produces that unconditional pride in yourself that builds up self-esteem and self-confidence. So you've relaxed your conscious brain through the effort. You've connected with your subconscious and sorted out some of the issues. And you're feeling proud of yourself. That's a healthy emotion management system. And when it's going for a walk, reading a book, having some prayer time, having some deep conversations, empathetic conversations with friends, all of those matter. But when you get too busy with the things you have to do, when life is coming at you like crazy and the first thing you do is forsake these other forms of emotion management and you become less functional as a human being. And if you take all that shit to bed with you, You may fall asleep because you're exhausted, but you're not dealing with it. And it wakes you up in the middle of the night. You have that restless night and you wake up feeling like you have to go back to bed. That's how I am this morning. And and you know what, folks, the beauty about the beauty about doing these videos is they allow me that that introspective period. They allow me to reflect. And I recognize I'm not perfect. Only the people on the internet are perfect. <laughs> I'm not by any means. But, but the point is that it allows me to recognize, wow, dude, you've let yourself go a little bit. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. And I'm going to give myself a day that belongs to me. I'm going to give myself a day where I get to do what I want to do. The things that give me pleasure, that give the people around me pleasure. I'm going to have spend some time with Rian, my son. I'm going to spend some time with Janae, my wife. I'm going to do things. I'm going to go for that walk on the beach. And you know what? The work can wait. 
The work can wait a day. It'll still be there tomorrow. It'll still be there tomorrow. My house isn't burning down. Don't have to put that fire out. Tomorrow will come. For a lot of people, tomorrow doesn't come. Tomorrow will come. But I'm doing things that give me fun because I had a crappy night's sleep. I recognize why. And tonight I'm going to have a much, much better night's sleep. And understanding sleep, understanding that it's not going to get better like this if that is your pattern. <clears throat> if you don't give yourself that dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, starting with cortisol in the morning, that transition. If your cortisol levels are high all the time, your body can't sustain that stress. And if you're wrapped up in anger and, and you're getting pissed off and upset like I've been the whole day today, that's cortisol, cortisol, cortisol. My adrenal glands are function, are firing away like crazy. <laughs> like hurricane warnings when there's a storm approaching. They just go, meh, 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 meh. And they're not giving me the relaxation and the tranquility I need. I have to provide that for myself. And part of it is stepping back from the rock face of my life and indulging in things that relax me, that give me time to process. And fatigue, adrenal fatigue for whatever, that, is most commonly related to an ongoing production of cortisol and all your adrenal gland hormones that keep you fired up. Like there's a tsunami coming at you all the time, and you have no way of dealing with that. Well, how the hell can you have a good night's sleep? And then you take a melatonin pill to artificially stimulate what your brain should be doing. And yeah, it gets you to sleep, but you still wake up in the middle of the night. So understand that you're not going to fix this like this. But if you can find ways to unwind, particularly in the evening. But unwinding is an active process where you relax, connect with your brain, sort through things so that you've decluttered your brain. You've dealt with things during the daytime or come up with a game plan of restitution. You're probably going to have a better night's sleep. And yes, the length of sleep does matter. The length of sleep does matter, but not as much as the quality of your sleep. And what you'll find on a carnivore diet when you've got a healthy, diverse, effort-based emotion management system, you don't need to sleep that long. I'm typically sleeping five, maybe six hours at the most, very often four hours. But the quality of my sleep is superb except this past week, because I took my shit to bed with me. And it prevented me from having a healthy night's sleep. I know I'm talking about myself right now, but I want you to reflect on this in your own life. Reflect on this in your own life. And think about how your cortisol levels are always up, how you're getting angry and upset about all these silly little things. If you're a control freak, if you're an authoritarian person that has to control everything, that need for control, that need for control is all about cortisol because you're all upset and you've got to control, control. Letting stuff go matters. Letting stuff go matters. On the flip side, if you come from a permissive family background and you just don't have the structure to do anything, when you don't get things done, that festers as well. But there is a middle ground. There is a middle ground to this. But taking care of your own needs first helps you to be more effective at helping those around you. And I forgot that. I forgot that this last couple of weeks. No self-care was involved. It was all about taking care of everybody else's needs. And here I sit. But I recognize it. It happens sometimes. And I'm going to take a break. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to do the things that I like to do. And during that time, I'm going to sort through my head and unclutter the crap. Because ultimately, ultimately, anxiety, depression, stress happen to everybody. And it's not about anxiety, stress, depression. It's about what tools we have in our toolkit to handle it. And sleep disturbance, sleep dysfunction falls into exactly that same category. Life is just not that important. 
in terms of the have to do's. Life is about what you get to do. Because you can't take any of this with you after you die. But there's no reason to die. Live. Live with joy. Live with pleasure. Live with relaxation. Don't burden yourself. Yes, there's stuff we have to do from time to time. But mitigate it against with Uh, mitigate against it with things that you get to do and you will have healthier and healthier night's sleeps. Is it going to change like this? No. But if that's your mindset, you can make it happen over time. Instead of taking a bunch of drugs and everybody's on Ambien and Trazodone and Melatonin and uh, Ativan and everybody's popping a pill, that's like taking a baseball club and whacking you over the head and saying, go to sleep. But it's not giving you a healthy night's sleep. It's not helping you to sleep to do what sleep is intended to do, which is just to relax physically your hormonal system and your mind. Taking drugs to sleep perseverates the problem and numbs the situation. It doesn't help you to deal with it. You may need the drugs for a little while, but ultimately it comes from how you live your life. I hope this helps. Because on the back end of not sleeping well is a relapse back to carbohydrates and snacking. That breakfast that I had this morning had nothing, zero, buckus to do with nutrition. It was all about my head. It was me relapsing back. It was eggs and cheese. Oh, that's keto. It's fine. No, it's not. Because I ate it for its emotional value, not for its nutritional value. I don't do breakfast. It's not part of my routine. And that was the trigger. Why the hell are you eating this right now? And all the answers, oh, it's healthy, it's eggs, it's whatever, BS. I was eating as a dysfunctional part of my relaxation because I haven't been sleeping well and because I haven't been dealing well with my issues and my sleep dysfunction is part of that. I hope this resonates. I hope this helps. I hope you see that I'm just human like you are. But we're all rowing the same boat. We're all trying to get better. Not perfect, but having insights and trying to improve ourselves. I am the carb addiction doc. I am a practicing clinical doctor when I'm awake. <laughs> and uh, you can text us at uh, 561-517-0642. I'm also on Instagram. And in fact, if you go back earlier this week to my Instagram posts, they reflect some of my mindset. But the penny didn't even drop with me. So give us a shout. Uh, Please leave comments down below. Leave comments down below, but be thoughtful, whether they're positive or negative. Be responsive. Be thoughtful. Add to our community. Don't throw darts. Don't, Don't just be an idiot. But if you want to be that, that's fine. I like my trolls. Take care. Have a good night's sleep tonight. I am. And I'm out.